Cynthia Absug, the mother that's going on trial for medical abuse of a child and plotting to kidnap her child from foster care with these QAnon conspiracy theorists. She's being charged with that, but the people that aided and abetted and were her co-conspirators, her partners in crime, they've gone uncharged as of now. And we're talking about Phil McConnell, who told Cynthia Absug that he worked for Donald Trump. We're talking about Timothy Holmseth and Randy Erickson, who said that they work for the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force. We're talking about Sarah Dunklin, the chair of the Deshay County Republican Party in Arkansas, who found Cynthia Absug online, latched onto her, and got her on Phil McConnell's show. We're talking about Sarah Dunklin's boyfriend, Ryan Wilson, who stayed with Cynthia and traveled with her all around the country while she was on the run and the FBI was after her. So there's a lot of conspiracy things that I have never heard of and I'm not aware of that are going on regarding, you know, reasons that children are taken. Her daughter really said um, things were spiraling pretty quick and then they started making this plan to go kidnap her son back from the foster family. Hi, good morning. I was just explaining to the chat room that you and possibly Sarah Dunklin might appear. She had messaged me the live stream to call in, you know, talk about the information about what's going on. Children's Crusade really starts to enter. Luciferian pedophiles in not only our government, but more importantly, in the fake court system. If you can get me the contact details for a fudge packer, or excuse me, Governor Polis, uh, I'll communicate with him directly, but you don't need an attorney. No, 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 you're not going to need an attorney. They're not the solution, they're the problem. Uh, I will get all your information where it needs to go, which is Trump, via the federal protection people that are working with Timothy Charles Homeset, and via the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force. Timothy Homeset, who actually started this whole Pentagon Pedophile Task Force, which, again, the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force doesn't actually exist. It'll get to Trump and Melania, and they're not going to allow this to continue. I, I had a remonstrance prepared by someone on the Pentagon Task Force and took it to the uh, state level. Um, yeah, so Timothy Homeseth claimed that they're part of this Pentagon Pedophile Task Force. Um, th there is no Pentagon Pedophile Task Force for a while. They claimed that Kirk Pendergrass and Chris Hallett and E. Claus were part of it as well. They make Cindy believe that, um, you know, things are escalating in terms of consequences and severity and uh, danger um, in her and her family and the details surrounding her case. It was suggested by the Children's Crusade that um, she have you know, 24 hour, you know, protection tells us the name is Ryan. The Children's Crusade is the one that sent him out there. That was their idea, their person there. They talked to Cindy about it. Now, act of course, after she's already had two people try to apparently break into her house. And I still think that was all part of the plan, but I mean, hopefully that comes out. They're the ones that initiated Ryan coming out there. Yes. Yes. God knows your voice. Uh, and I want to tell you something personally, so I hope everybody around the world plugs their ears. But your husband or husband equivalent is in one of my cars with a handgun that I own doing something that would please everybody on our team, uh, especially President Trump. And then Ryan comes out and he says, we have to we have to go. They're going to come after you. He's made it heavily suggested that they were coming to apprehend her. If you feel like you're for your safety, you have to leave. Like, okay, like I'll, I'll, t I'll take you. Cindy, myself, and Ryan uh, start to leave out of state, stay in Wyoming overnight. Morning, we head out from uh, Wyoming, and the destination is a safe house in Wisconsin. It's uh, Field McConnell's house outside of Plum City, Wisconsin. We left Fields, I want to say the maybe the seventh or the eighth of October. It's Cynthia, myself, and Ryan, and we're at this uh, little shop, and all of a sudden, Field McConnell calls the owner of that shop and tells him that we have to depart right away. 
that they are looking for um, a med student, um, Sarah's guy, Ryan, and a mother of two. Um, Field had one of his friends who, you know, kind of went on a show sometimes. They were – so we go to uh, – he offers us um, shelter for the night. The night of the 8th of October, we stay um, outside of Osceola, Wisconsin, and the office – of the friend that offered to help Cindy. He drives back to Field's house, picks up all of our stuff. Then we leave again on the 9th of October. Now, during this entire time, other members of the Children's Crusade have been in contact with Cindy. One of them was Sarah Dunklin. One of them is now Ryan, that we met in person, but also um, a woman named Dana. Different people from the Children's Crusade were setting her up with, you know, different kinds of legal aspects, you know, unconventional. Um, outside of the box ideas, um, Dana was kind of managing her case, so to speak. One of the things she was helping her with was um, like a diplomatic immunity passport, um, which Dana and filled out on for Cynthia's behalf. The owner of the office we were staying at even arranged uh, for some funds to be wired to us, um, about five thousand dollars in cash, and that was organized through Dana. Being inside of it still, um, some of the, even some recent events uh, and some information that I've received kind of it still makes me wonder like how how and why now she is facing charges her trial is expected to begin in August and she was being aided by this crazy conspiracy theory group QAnon as well as this faction of QAnon that's involved in sovereign citizen anti-government nonsense he's a sovereign citizen Oh, Lord, it, it's bad news. But, you know, they prey on women who have been traumatized on, the, you know, who've already been traumatized by the system. And they're telling them a bunch of things that sound really good. And, um, you know, when you're in that situation, you've never gotten any help and no, nothing's helping. Nothing's working. The lawyers you have don't work. Um, yeah, I, I could see how these women would fall for it. Um, and it's it's they're con men accused of Munchausen's by proxy which as you said, it's making your child sick to get attention. She tossed Ellers Danlos out there. That is, that's a huge red flag. Um, you know, I think she had also said that he was autistic on the spectrum. His mental level was way less than his age. As soon as the child was removed from her custody, he got better. And then she fell in, she was doing the circuit, the YouTube circuit of the anti-family court movement at anti-CPS. And she, she got caught up with the group. It's with a heavy heart that I come to you this evening and um, report to you that my friend and uh, grieving mother who um, was doing nothing but trying to get her illegally kidnapped children back, Cindy Absick has been arrested at gunpoint here in Kalispell, Montana, um, FBI from Douglas uh, County, Colorado. I actually got a tip from Douglas County, Colorado and let the local authorities know um, that this um, this dangerous criminal, C Cindy Absig, is, uh, uh, was uh, here in Kalispell, Montana. The Douglas County jury deliberated about four hours today before returning the guilty verdicts. Prosecutors alleged Abzug's son underwent unnecessary and risky medical procedures after she claimed he had seizures, heart disease, and brain tumors. And then they alleged she plotted with members of a group known as QAnon to grab him from the foster home where he was staying. She denied all those charges, but left the courthouse convicted of conspiracy to commit secondary kidnapping and child abuse that knowingly or recklessly caused injuries to her son. I think probably our most important evidence was the lapse of time in this case. The fact that in this case, maybe the fact that the jury system moves slowly helped us quite a bit because then uh, Christopher's pediatrician and his, his foster mom had more time to observe him without the alleged symptoms. The prosecution stressed repeatedly that the boy thrived in the three years since he was removed from Abzug's care.